Providence, Rhode Island, home to seven colleges and a thriving art scene. This Renaissance city is a constant beehive of activity. In 2005, Abby and her best friend Rico bought a restaurant called Down City, smack in the center of town. Rico and I were on the beach one day, and I told him that I was interested in buying Down City, and he said, I want to own a restaurant too. I was spending a lot of money in restaurants, eating and drinking, and I figured, why not give myself the money instead? <laughs> Make it a double. He has a full-time day job, and my job is to take care of everything in this restaurant. You start with all the specials, I'm gonna get the wine. Okay. Well, I've been in the restaurant business for 33 years, so the decisions I make, I really don't consult Rico about them, I just do them. And this would go perfectly with the pork special. I am the checkbook behind Down City, and I was putting 100% of my faith in Abby. But at this point, it's not going well. I need more asses in the seats. I think it's a beautiful restaurant. I think our menu is creative, and the food is good. I don't know what's wrong. What's all fucked up? Abby has her blindfolds on because she doesn't want to admit that she's part of the problem. Just give him, no, let me do it. Abby acts like. Whatever, don't argue. Corella DeVille. <laughs> I just want an answer when I call something out. Abby is a complete psycho fucking bitch. I just want an answer. Which is a recipe for utter disaster. I had fixed it yesterday. I checked it before I left. Is this, like, really fucking happening? I'm not yelling. I'm talking. They think that this is a democracy, and it's not. If you cannot follow my rules, then get the fuck out. As long as you work for me, you do it my way. Enough said. It's basically Abby's way of the highway, and it's definitely why a restaurant's failing. Welcome to my nightmare. There's no consistency. It's just, like, mushy. If people are complaining about the food, maybe there's something wrong with the food. It is impossible for the fries to be ice cold. Maybe just Abby saying it's great does not make it great. That's how the plate is prepared. Do you not like it? No. She built this 50-item menu that is just horrible. They hate the chicken pie arts. What? Nobody can say anything about the menu because it's her menu. She takes it personally. Maybe they're not the right decisions, but they're my decisions. I have to get Abby on board to move forward because my life is at stake here. All I think about is why people are not coming to my restaurant. If something happened here where I had to declare bankruptcy, it could very strongly affect my day job. That's stress. We've got all these bills to pay this weekend. That's the stack. This week. I've called upon Chef Ramsey because of his honesty and bluntness. But he's going to have his work cut out for him. <laughs> I guarantee. Hello. Hello, Chef Ramsey. How are you? Welcome to Down City. Nice to meet you. Likewise, my pleasure. And your first name is? Abby. Abby, good to see you. Oh, and you're you the owner. I'm the owner, general manager, everything. Yep. So my business partner is in here. He'll come in tonight. OK, great. Yep, his name is Rico. Right. So you're trained classically in terms of? Absolutely not. You would not want me to cook you anything. Oh, really? And on a scale of 1 to 10, mark the food, what would you say? Where are we? It's a 10. Wow. It's wow, wow, wow. Yes. Perfect. I'm starving because the room service next door was shocking. The, wait a minute, wait. The room service next door was shocking? What do you mean it was shocking? Uh, I, there's a little hotel next door, a little boutique hotel. We do the room service for that hotel. What was the problem? Honestly? Yeah. That was embarrassing. Why? What did you have? This pissy, grainy soup that was stone cold. Hold on, it gets worse. Crab cakes that were stone cold in the center. It was just like this ball of mush. Disgusting. 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 Whoa. I was like, oh, damn, he went there. He just really went there. That's impossible. That's impossible with a crab cake, stone cold. You're telling me I'm exaggerating? I think you're one of those customers that I would fire immediately. Yeah. You fire customers? I have. OK. Well, let me sit down and eat. Can I suggest something? I don't want you to suggest anything, because if you're okay. now telling me that that room service was you at your best, I'm shitting myself before I start eating. Wow. Let me tell you that. Wow. Wow. I don't know what he's talking about. Blah, 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 blah. Where would you like me to sit? I'm going to go right Thank over you. here. Excellent. Describe the food for me. Um, comfort food, middle of the road. Middle of the road? When was the last time somebody sent food back? <laughs> today. <laughs> oh, today? Okay. Oh, you did? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I'm sorry. <laughs> OK. 
Um, I'll look through the menu. Is this Can I suggest something or no? You don't uh, want my suggestion? If you're going to talk to me honestly, fine. If you're going to start, you know, going defensive... I'm not going to get defensive. I'm just defending what we do here. Now, Abby, I'm not here to argue. You asked me to come here and look at this place to help you out. Let's get one thing clear straight away. Cut the bullshit. OK. If you're going to sit there and start bullshitting I'm me, not sitting, I'm standing. I'm going to go for your balls. Big time. Wow. When you just told me five minutes ago that the food's 10 out of 10, the room service is perfect, basically I'm going to eat and I'm going to leave, unless you start telling me the truth. I, I don't know where you're coming from. I really don't know where you're coming from. Let me from. eat the I food. Think, I absolutely me... think you're fucking full of shit. I've been here five minutes, and already you're in denial. I'm not in denial. I will back up anything my kitchen does. Fine. I'm open-minded. Can I order the food? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Go for it. Appreciate it. Wow, what a welcoming. Yeah, welcome to Providence. Didn't know they did female cage fighters. Holy crap. Boy, I can't wait till Rico gets here. Hi, how are you? I'm Rothy, how are you? Good, good, good. And this is Josh. Josh, good to see you. Welcome to Dallas okay, City. Great. So nice to see that friendly face. Thank you. Um, is the owner, Abby, always that defensive? Yeah. It's scaring me. <laughs> okay, appetizers, calamari. Yeah. Crispy rings with hot sweet pepper sauce. Yeah, I'll go for some of that. Okay. You don't spell peppers like that either. No, I guess you don't. I didn't even know that. How long have you been here? Three years. Three years. Okay, uh, three way nachos. It says uh, it's a party in my mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if it's good enough to be put on the menu, I'm going to try it. So I'll go for party in your mouth. Okay. And the um, award winning meatloaf. That's our claim to fame. <laughs> Ready. Thanks, Josh. You're welcome. Please, may God, we don't die in Rhode Island. Okay, this is Gordon Ramsay's order. Let's make Gordon's food. I'm a good cook, but uh, that is not my menu. Of course, I want to do well, but I'm not sure what Chef Ramsay's gonna think. He's like, is this how you spell peppers in America? Three P's, because it's B E P P? Yeah. There's three P's in there. There it is. Hi. How are you? How are you? Oh, thank you. Good nice to see to meet you. Likewise. Jason. Gordon, good to see you. So you're waiter? The waiter, yes. Dining room manager, yes. Brilliant. And being the head waiter, how would you describe the food here? Below par. Yeah. Abby said it was a 10. <laughs> so I'm in for a treat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> calamari? Oh. OK. Well, this is the crispy calamari. Calamari, yes. Ooh. And um, why does it look so wet? Uh, it's a uh, sauce that they toss it in. <laughs> Just say that again. You fry it. They fry it. And then you... And then they toss it in the sauce. <laughs> and it's soaking wet. All the crispy batter is just coming off. You know, it's not everybody's cup of tea. It's not mine. Yeah, it certainly it's not mine either. Uh, but, however, I'm optimistic. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I mean, look at that there. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm done on that one. Yeah, I'll get rid of that. I don't understand it. Thank you. You're welcome. Wow. Soggy, chewy, disgusting calamari. Shocking. What do you say about it? You spit the calamari back out. <laughs> <laughs> That's hysterical. What was he bitching about? Spit it out. I'm gonna, like, go at his throat today. And this is a party in your mouth? <laughs> this is the party in my mouth. Should be. Top plate, very hot. It looks dreadful. I think I've just thrown up in my mouth. <laughs> what a mess. Oh, boy. I'm taking it that was one party you didn't want to attend. It wasn't a party in my mouth. It was like a funeral in my mouth. A funeral? <laughs> yeah. Well, it kind of does look like something died. <laughs> What's the matter with that? That's gross. What? We're not doing too good here. I was ready to, like, choke him. Maybe this is the one thing I like. He doesn't like anything. Maybe this will be the one. What, the meatloaf? Well, maybe this will be it. Wow, well, that's the meatloaf. Okay. And this is the um, award-winning. The award-winning meatloaf. Yeah, I'm excited. Thank you. You're welcome. It doesn't move on there, does it? Ooh. <laughs> wow. That's disgusting. What do we think? Wow. It's not even hot. I'm sorry. It's sort of lukewarm, solidified chunks of crap. That's pretty much the norm. <laughs> it must be freaking embarrassing if you just serve this. It is embarrassing. I don't like the meatloaf here at all. We set ourselves up for disappointment when we put award winning in front of it. What was the problem with meatloaf? It's disgusting. Can you be more specific? I didn't hear. I didn't hear what he said. I'm gonna have to ask him. Abby and Chef Ramsay are gonna go to blows. Can I have a word of the team? It's, it's inevitable. It's going to happen. So, 
The food was shocking. Below par, disgusting, dated shit. So, who is the head chef here? We don't really have one, but I guess... What do you mean you don't have a head I, chef? But I guess I'm the closest thing. The closest? What does that mean? Talk to me, Abby. That means that I fired my other chef and he took over and I didn't want to give him a title until he proved to himself that he could handle the kitchen. Abby, what you're employing is a ship with no captain at the helm and the team desperate for guidance. No guidance is no standards. No standards is no consistency. So who came up with the menu? If this is American comfort food, somebody's dreaming here. I did. So, I did. I take full responsibility for the menu. You have no cooking background, but you put the menu together. Abby, you've got to understand how frustrating this is. It's ridiculous. I don't know what to say. Fix it. You fix it. That's why you're Oh, come on, Abby. How can I fix it when you stand there in front of your team, rating you and your restaurant and your food 10 out of 10 dreamer? I don't, I don't think it's as I bad can... as you say it, I it is. Stop being in denial. Can you be more specific about the meatloaf? What did you not like about the meatloaf? Oh, shit! Can you say something besides... Just loopy! I've been called worse than that. Wake up and admit it's shit! Bring it on. Oh, come bring on. Bring it on. What do you mean, bring it on? To have Chef Ramsay say, everything you've done, everything that you've dreamed of doing is shit. I was blown away. I need some fresh air. After Chef Ramsay's harsh critique... The food was shocking, dated and tasteless. Abby has a conversation with the one person she believes is always right, herself. So what do I do? Like, just get out of the restaurant business? Then obviously my 33 years in the business is, like, worthless and I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. OK. I think I'm going to open up that hot dog stand down the beach. Want some tea or something? No. I believe from the bottom of my heart that he's he's wrong. I really don't care what he says. Well, he's completely full of shit. Like seriously, our meatloaf is like what put us on the map. I mean, it's great. I don't like the meatloaf. You really don't? I honestly don't. We had it the other we night together. Had... What? What what didn't you like about it? I think our food is mediocre. Like it's not Mini me, seriously. Not You're telling me now you don't like it? We eat it because we're here. Yeah. This is not my restaurant of choice. I will not dine here in my off time. You're saying for what we serve, comfort food, meatloaf, pasta, steak, whatever. It's You're saying for those? It's not even for that. No. no. So now you're all telling me that you don't like the menu? I feel stabbed in the back, I guess. You're just hitting me with this now. Do you know what we're up against if we even opened our mouth about the menu once? Every time we opened our mouth, fuck off, fuck you. You don't know anything. We're all at a point now where we're just like, if this is what she wants, let's just serve it out. We'll take it out of the window and bring it to the table. Try and make the what are we going to have an opinion about now? Oh, you're so full of shit. No, 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 no. Say shit. shit and talk to us. No. Without a doubt, she's in denial. It's an hour before dinner service, and Down City's other owner, Rico, shows up. Hello. Unaware of what happened earlier, but that's quickly about to change. How are you? I don't even know how to answer that. <laughs> One of those days? I think it's time for Abby to find out that the outbursts and treating employees badly, I think it's definitely time she has someone other than myself telling her, you can't be doing this. Yeah. Wow. I, didn't I, have, I have another asshole, a whole other asshole back here. I've just been ripped open. Make it a double. <laughs> oh, hi. How are you? I'll get up. I'll go say hi. Gordon, good to see you. Nice to meet you, I'm Rico. Rico, now, have you got two minutes? Sure. We're going to catch up? Uh, where should we go? Yeah, let's go there. Yeah. He may rip me apart too, but I just want this restaurant to work. So let's get turning it around. Uh, what a day. Um, obviously, you weren't here for lunch. Just explain what you do during the day. Um, I work for credit union during the day. I do their mortgages for them. OK, wow. So, finance? Yes, finance. And then you bought a restaurant? And I bought a restaurant. How's that worked out for you so far? Oh, horribly. If we had to close this tomorrow, what are you in for? A million. Shit, really? Mm -hmm. This is quite serious shit now. Oh, yeah. What happens if it fails? I could possibly lose my day job. Really? Because I'm in the financial field. I'm advising people on what to do with their mortgaging and financing their properties and things like that. So you're up to there? 
you've got a big stake in this restaurant and a huge amount of jeopardy if it fails. Mm -hmm. You're right. There's a line that I walk in here, a very fine line. I have a lot of at stake, but I totally let Abby run the restaurant and maybe this mistake on my part. With dinner service already underway. What about something to drink to get you started? Chef Ramsay is eager to spend some time in the kitchen to see how it functions. Wow, tight behind the line. So who's doing what? Explain the line to me. Uh, this is Sardine's kitchen, and then we have our salad to right. down there. Jesus, uh, why is the place so messy? Is the kitchen normally this filthy? The last couple of days, it's been uh, a lot going on. That is foul. With the kitchen in disarray, Chef Ramsay goes on the hunt to find out what is lurking below. Oh, my God. Wow, this is gross down here. Holy crap. Look at that, lamb bones. Just dumped in there like that. What is that? Chicken carcasses. Oh, my God. And while Chef Ramsay has his hands full in the walk-in, God knows what that is. Abby has her hands full in the dining room. Abby, I need a new calamari with the sauce on the side because it says it's too mushy. Can I have another calamari with the sauce on the side, please? It needs to be cooked a little more. Is it? Yeah, I'm gonna take it out of the way for you. I need a spin dip, this is cold. I'm going out of my mind right now. It's a nightmare. Can we just 86 this special? Every single one of them has been sent back. Uh, Rico, Abby, I just need one minute, just both of you together. One minute. Why is right now, like, are you kidding me? Have a look in there. Look at the state of what they're cooking out of. Have you any idea what's in what box, uh, what goes where? Over here, now you've got a little bag of uh, chicken carcasses. On this one here, you've got some raw chicken, cooked pork there. This is you with 30 years in the business. Yeah, hold on, it gets worse. I don't know what that is. Well, look at the cheese or something, but what is that there? What is that? What, you lost the words? The place is a filthy mess. Look, what is that? Lamb bones? And who's organising this? You haven't got a head chef. Jimmy is my head chef. So we have a head chef. Before you weren't ready to confirm he was a head chef, all of a sudden we discover a mess down here. Now, he's appointed. So why don't we just celebrate and just get out of this business? Why don't we what? It's like, I was talking to Rico. It has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with me? No. Excuse me, what do you think I'm doing? I mean, I, I'm trying... You're being, you're being a fucking asshole. This wasn't like this. Hold on it a wasn't minute. like this. I don't hold, run a kitchen like this. Hold on a minute. You're calling me a fucking asshole? I am. You stuck-up, precious little bitch. Let me tell you oh, something. Oh, boy. Here we you're go. Not, listen to me. I'm not going to listen to you. You're in denial. I'm not in denial. Yes, you are. I'm not in denial. Yes, you are. And you can't even I'm accept it. Fuck you. You'll walk out again. I am. Fuck you. There you go. Flip the bird. That's your attitude, and that's your partner. I'm really sorry, but this wasn't like this before I got here. She's deluded that woman. You are insane. You are like... Yeah, blame me all you want. These excuses that you're insane. I'm insane. You're insane. You can't even admit you're the fucking, fucking truth. You're fucking insane. That refrigerator was not like that before you got here. You're in denial. Flip out again. I would no. never allow that refrigerator to and look like bones, that. And those bones, the mouldy lamb bones. I don't even perfect. talk to my staff like this. You're Why don't you perfect. get the fuck out of my restaurant? Want me to go? I would love you to go. I will go. Get the fuck out of my I restaurant, will go. please. You are so okay. in denial. Okay. You need therapy. You're a disgrace in this industry. Oh, you would get out of my restaurant. Are you still here? Not now, guys. Please, please, please. Fuck him. Right from the beginning, Chef Ramsay and Abby have clashed. Stop being in denial! I don't think it's as bad as you say. Dreamer! But after a confrontation over the state of the walk-in... You're being a fucking asshole. This wasn't like this. You're calling me a fucking asshole? Fuck you. Abby has completely lost it. You are insane. You are, like... Yeah, blame me all you want. These excuses that you're insane. I'm insane. You're insane. And while she has had enough of Chef Ramsay... Get the fuck out of my house, please. You are so in denial. You need therapy. He has had enough of her. You're a disgrace in this industry. Oh, you get out of my restaurant. Are you still here? Not now, guys. Please, please, please. Fuck okay. him. Chef Ramsay. Hey, guys, I need some privacy, please. This is, uh, 
Too serious. Um, I'm not going to jeopardise 25 years busting my ass off in this industry to take that from someone so in denial. Mm -hmm. I really don't need this. I would rather this restaurant close than have him in here. That refrigeration unit was a mess. Mm -hmm. Behind the line was a mess. I'm really sorry. Honestly, she's got to start listening. I, I know. I, and I don't know how to make her do it. I really... I don't know. Is he, he's coming back tonight, isn't he? I don't give a fuck where he goes. He can go to hell for all I care. If you want me to leave, I'm out of here. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. OK, I need your help. You got my 100% support. 100%. OK, I'm going to go for a walk, and I'll come back. OK? okay? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Abby needs to be on board with us and stop her denial of everything. We have to break through it. I feel pretty shitty. How would you feel if someone is telling you that your life's work and everything you've dreamed of doing for your whole life um, is shit? Now I'm completely questioning myself and I hope we can have a conversation about what needs to be done in this restaurant. After a volatile evening that included a massive blow-up with Chef Ramsay and a weak dinner service, Abby has been clearly humbled and seems ready to finally listen to what Chef Ramsay has to say. OK, let's agree on something. Today's been a shit day. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Absolute shit. I'm not here to rub your face in it. Let's get that right. OK. But, Abby, you know, I've had failure in my life. But one thing I'm not in is denial. And when I do make a mistake, I admit it. I understand. So tomorrow we need to start being honest and open so I can start rebuilding. I can't rebuild on BS. I agree. I want you to be here. I want you to help me get this restaurant to where I need it to be. Where we know it can be. Yeah. Tomorrow we start again, get some rest. It's a new day and Abby and Rico are on board for change. Morning, morning, morning. But before that can happen, Chef Ramsay wants to give the staff something they have been rarely given, a chance to talk freely without getting fired. So this is what we're going to do. I want each of you to write down some questions and direct them to the person you want them to answer. This is going to be another hell day for me. Don't sign your name. It's anonymous. I knew that if we were going to do an exercise um, in talking about the restaurant, I knew that it was all going to be directed at me. Thank you very much. OK, good. Here's the, uh, the first one. Wow. Abby, why is the menu so huge? We are uh, just um, to give the customer more choices. But the amount of dishes is absurd. And the more dishes, the lower the standard. Uh, Abby and Jimmy, the quality of the food needs to improve. How can we fix it? Good question. It, and it all comes down to menu size. With as many items that are, there are, if you prep 50 items just for dinner alone, and then the dessert menu, if you can't prep enough stuff, yeah. it's, it's like you, you just can't do it. Who's putting all those dishes on there? Abby, yeah. Abby. When I put this menu together, I just expected my staff to just do this menu. Abby, why do you not allow anyone to express their opinions without it being seen as a personal attack to you? Since I bought this restaurant, I became a defensive bitch. I question and I get upset at the fact that you're questioning what I'm doing. That's paranoia. We do care about this restaurant. You are our friend. So we want to see you succeed. And the answer I've gotten from you in the past is, fuck you, that's not true. We're just here for money. Or we're just here what? because we're just here because we can't get other jobs and stuff. And it's it's hurtful because when you invest so much time and you do, we would do anything for you. And I completely realized we've just gotta talk more instead of me yelling and screaming. It can't just be my show. It's not the Abbey show, it's the Down City show. Are you ready to embrace change? Yeah, absolutely. Major change. Absolutely. I think this experience is making Abby realize that she has to relinquish control. And I think she's going to do it because I think Abby turning around is definitely paramount for this restaurant to survive.
Right, Jimmy, let's get one. As Abby's menu was clearly bogging down the kitchen, Chef Ramsay has gone through it and scaled it back. Tonight, I'm just gonna keep it really simple. For tonight's dinner service, half the items are off the menu, and he's introducing a roasted chicken special. Just take the breast, fat side down, just cut through. Everyone's excited, and we can't have another night like the previous few. It's time to get it right. Happy? Happy. Makes it a lot more simple. Big time. Folks, good evening. Welcome to Down City. Follow me. Did you guys decide on appetizers? We're gonna have an order of the calamari. So we're doing two calamaris? Oh, let's get the grilled chicken breast, please. Chicken breast? Yes. I've got to get everyone involved if we are gonna take Down City to the next step, to the next level. All right, here we go. Order fire, calamari, pizza salad, nishwa salad. Make sure everything comes up at the same time. Tonight's smaller menu is having an immediate impact. Wipe the plates, please. Better prepared appetizers are quickly leaving the kitchen. That's 37, that's up. These um, appetizers are going to 39. Can you help her run? And when you combine that with a calm and under control Abby at the helm. Can you run this to the next table, please? Down City's dinner service is off to a good start. Chicken is very delicious. Oh, yeah. Order fire, calamari, another frisé salad, no eggs. Jimmy, we've got to bang all these um, know, entrees I know, out. I know. Here, you're on apps. You're on table 28. Now I'm confused on where we are for apps. You need table 28. I don't even have a 36 up here. What are you talking I don't, about? I didn't say oh, 36. One, two, three. Come on, guys. There's nothing coming out. Jimmy was supposed to be the leader in the kitchen, calling out tickets. Do me a favor. Get two of the, Oh, you're doing something? And they just started crossing paths. No one seems to know what the hell they were doing back there. 29 and 39. Yes or no? No, I'm still waiting on 28. Oh, fucking word. It's an hour and a half into a dinner service that started out as promising. Can I have some food up in the window, please? No, dude, dude, this couscous is runny and gross. But unfortunately, has declined rapidly. They're not even here. That's all the way down there. They have none of this. And not surprisingly, diners are losing their patience. If it's not here within like, the next five minutes, I'm probably going to cancel it. Can I get something up on the line, please? Yeah, well, right now, right now. Jimmy's doing all three sections. He's covering the grill, he's covering the salmon, he's covering the chicken, he's trying to run the kitchen as well at the same time. He's got nothing behind him. Oh, my God, what a shit show. Well, we've been here since 6.30, and it's already 25 of them, so we'll have our entree. I know. I'm, I'm going to so, go check so on your is, entree this is right now. Good. I've got people that had put their orders in an hour and 15, hour and a half, some of them. Where the fuck was that food? Let's uh, find our server, and, and let's just go. Did that refried chicken go? Give it to him. I need it right now, please. Come on. Is it your first time at the rodeo? Play it up. Guys, I got food dying in the windows. Chris, please. Yeah, I can't take this. It was a disgrace. It was horrifying. It was embarrassing. Don't make this. They just walk. Oh, my god. We need a whole new kitchen staff. Jimmy doesn't have any excuses anymore. His excuse for months has been, our menu is too big. So we give him a smaller menu to do, and they still can't turn it out. So, I mean, where do we go from here? I need one chicken up on the line right now. With Abby pushing her kitchen staff. I'm not taking this out until it's all up on the line. Can I have a chicken on the line, please? In my hand. OK. They still struggle, <laughs> but manage to get the last entrees out. There we go. And that's, the, that's everything? Start cleaning up. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, an unusually calm Abby... Jimmy, come out here. Listen to me. ...is about to let loose. What I saw tonight was the worst shit show I've ever seen. Ever, ever, ever seen. No, I know, I know, I know. It did not go smoothly, but they... they, they smoothly? They Jimmy, we were an hour in before more than two dinners went out. An hour into service. I'm almost accepting that. None of us know what the fuck we're doing, and we can't get to the next step. I'm actually considering that. After tonight, I don't know if I have the staff to get it back. I don't know if we can do it. Tonight's dinner service was plagued by confusion and incompetence in the kitchen. Can I get something up on the line, please? I'm confused on where we are. Come on, is it your first time at the rodeo? Play it up. The problems are obvious to Chef Ramsay, but it's time to find out if Abby is still in denial. Abby, what did you see tonight? What happened is it happens all the time. As soon as the line gets hit with a number of slips at one time, the kitchen folds. It goes down in flames. And um, 
I've lost confidence in my kitchen, um, honestly. Jimmy, I'm not blaming you entirely. I'm looking at the tools you've got to work with, and it's a disaster. Behind that line, there's no way on earth this group of cooks can pull off a new menu. So seeing how frustrating it's been here, I made a call to a very experienced chef in my team to be here. First thing tomorrow morning, getting your crew at a respectable level. It's cool having his chef to help us all out, and it's going to be a good experience for all of us. Tomorrow's comeback day. We're relaunching with a new menu. Let's roll up our sleeves and push it. I mean, really push it. Definitely. Can't wait. I'll see you first thing in the morning. Absolutely. Thank you. Good night. I'm glad that kitchen's going to be shown what to do and how to do it properly, because this is it. It's not only my kitchen's last chance, it's my restaurant's last chance. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Wow, come in. How are we? Good. Good. The chef that I brought in, James, has been here since 6 o'clock this morning, supervising, working his ass off with your team, getting ready for this menu. Today, your menu will be in keeping with your beautiful restaurant and your great service. First up, the appetizers. Come down. Oh. Now, these are appetizers, squeezing on the eye and fun. Ghost cheese, truffle dip, honey spiced chicken wings, meatball sliders, delicious. Wow. Now we can have a real party in our mouth, Abby. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. OK, on to the entrees. The main events, seared lamb chop, classic lobster mac and cheese, bacon wrapped, Angus meatloaf. Yay! Thank you. I want you to get familiar with the new menu. Yes, get up to speed with those dishes. Have a little taste. This is awesome. That's money. The new menu is... Yeah, believe. Kind of surprised that it came out of my kitchen. <laughs> oh my god, that is good. Bacon wrapped okay. meatloaf. Isn't that awesome? Oh my god, it's unbelievable. <laughs> I had no idea that it could get this good. Oh my god, wow. that's amazing. I've been for years describing this restaurant as creative comfort food. I had no clue. This is creative comfort food. <laughs> oh my god, this is like my dream. I've never seen Abby this emotional. Like, she does have a heart in there. She does have a soul. It's amazing. <laughs> there is a God. <laughs> now we just got to make it work. <laughs> it's relaunch night at Down City. And while Abby and Rico get the front of the house ready for the most important night in the restaurant's history, we are going to rock this town tonight. Let's go. Let's go. Back in the kitchen. And then we're going to go here, table by table, until we have to do picks. Yes. Chef James is doing the same with the kitchen staff. Every dish perfect, every time. Folks, how are we doing tonight? Welcome, welcome. Have you had a chance to look at all the new and fun, exciting menu items that we have? Let's go, guys. Yeah? I want to hear you tonight. I want to hear you too, yes? Let's go. Only minutes into the service, a locally renowned food blogger has arrived. Stacy Place ripped apart her last meal at the restaurant. Happy. You recognize her? Yeah. You know how important she is. But Chef Ramsay convinced her to give it another try. She has 10,000 followers. She vlogs tomorrow. We're 10,000 potential customers back up. I've tried everything on this menu today. So if you have any questions, you feel free to ask. Any favorites that we should Oh, yeah, have? definitely. The goat and cheese truffle dip really stood out for me. Well, that sounds really good. Jimmy, yes. you and I, we're going to be communicating all night. I need the answer 37, 17, and 35. All right. Right now, in the window, I need that fish and chip. I need that slider. Slider's up, Chef. A reinvigorated Jimmy has the kitchen moving in the right direction. Calamari, sliders. Jimmy, keep it going, yeah? Frise salad on the fly. And the new menu is being embraced by the customers. <laughs> wow. But just when it appears as though it's going to be smooth sailing. I need a chowder, a calamari, a slider. Jimmy, did you call the calamari for table 30? I just did. Abby and Jimmy. Listen to me. Are having a communication breakdown. And I need four soups and one chowder up in the line, please. That's incorrect. Uh-oh, here we go again. A repeat of last night. The kitchen's going down. We're fucked. Jimmy, focus on 37, yeah? This is the golden ticket. This is it. All right, lead ticket. I need a truffle dip. Truffle dip takes six minutes, yes? Yes, sir. All right, get it in the oven. Jimmy, look at me. We're falling behind. Got to work together. 
Yeah. Come on, guys, there's nothing coming out. Please. Right, let's get this food out. Give me a time on the truffle dip, please. Jesus, she's not blogging now, is she? What's she doing? She's definitely blogging. She's blogging live on the table? We've got bloggers live from their table, guys. I need a trouble dip up on the line right now. Urgently, please. I was horrified. We are slipping like the night before. They're blogging as we speak. I wanted to, like, just scream. Come on, guys, I need some food on the line. There's nothing hitting the window. Come on, guys. I need to see some food up on this line. It's taking too long. Literally, my kitchen going down in flames. Listen, Jimmy. One minute, Abigail. And there was literally nothing I could do about it. Abby. Jimmy, I need a truffle dip. Come on, guys. It's 45 minutes into dinner service. Let's get this food out. We've got bloggers live from their table, guys. And an influential food blogger who can greatly affect the future of Down City. I need a truffle dip up on the line right now. Still has not received her appetizers. Abby, two seconds, quickly. Take over. Take over. Let's go. Abby. She just tweeted, waiting for appetizers, getting hungry. OK, this is not bullshit now. Menu's there, chefs are there, I need you there. Control it. Yeah, I know what you're capable of. Yeah. Yes, and it's been tough for the last couple of days, yeah. granted. However, you've got to find your voice. Okay. okay. Come on. All right, OK. Please. Please. It's definitely time to step it up. We want everything to go right with that table, and we're going to get the job done. Listen, Jimmy, they're already blogging that they're waiting too long for food. Let's get this food out. All right, how long on a solo truffle dip? Urgently, please. Truffle dip behind you. Thank you. Truffle dip in the Sally. Caesar's there? With that Caesar, I need sliders and a truffle dip. Come on, guys. Happy. Happy. Read that discreetly. Truffle dip, amazing, yes? Yeah. Come on, keep it going, yes? On trays, make sure they come together, OK? Fire that table, please, yeah? Jimmy. What's up? 37, did you fire? I did fire. Good. So we got everything. This is a really good season. With Abby focused on the task at hand. Come on, let's get loud back there. And Jimmy in full control of his kitchen. You guys can fire that fish and chip. Quality entrees are quickly heading out to the dining room. Midrear lamb chops, salmon, ribs, filet. Midrear lamb herd. Food looks amazing. The food looks outstanding. Absolutely amazing. It appears as though blogger Stacy Place has reached her verdict. This looks amazing. Yeah. Very tender. And she's not the only one. Do you like that? And those chips, aren't they delicious? Yeah. A lot better than last summer. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. How was everything? Delicious. The great. flavor was right there. Everything was great. Great. Thank you so much for coming in, oh. and we're going to see you again. I was living an absolute kitchen nightmare, and my dream just came true. I'm in absolute shock. Like, this is the restaurant I've always wanted. Those are the last two desserts. Jimmy, it was awesome. Thank you. It's a new Dell City. I'm just absolutely loving it. Right. Last night, I said Down City needed to make a comeback. Tonight, we did just that. Well done. Each and every one of you pulled off a great service. Customers loved the food. Abby, how do you feel, babe? I feel beyond belief fantastic. Looking back at it now, I was so unprofessional. Get the fuck out of my restaurant. Get the fuck out of my restaurant, please. The new Abby is professional. I just want to continue learning. It's just made me such a better leader. Come on in. Give me a hug. You're not going to ask me. I'm going to ask you. That's right. I, Gordon Ramsay, are asking you for a hug. Come here. Huh? Thank you. I absolutely love Chef Ramsay, and uh, I'm going to miss him when he goes. Thank you very much, Russell. This restaurant is getting back on the map that it hasn't been on in a while. And I know it's only going to get better. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Without question, the biggest transformation this week is Abby, which I never expected. As Abby goes, so goes Down City. If she can keep her cool, this restaurant is going to be a huge success. Wow. Party in my mouth, please. <laughs> After Chef Ramsay left, Chef James stayed on 
and continued to train the cooks. It gets prepped and put away. Allowing Jimmy the chance to thrive. All right, now meatloaf's being played, and that sells the lead. And Abby rewarded him with a promotion. I wanted to introduce to all of you our head chef, James Berman. Let's give it up. Eager to spread the word about their upgraded restaurant, nice to meet you. Abby and Rico hit the town. This is a crispy pork belly in a lettuce cup. Doing some grassroots marketing by giving out samples of their new menu. It's right down the street, it's walking distance. Yeah. Chef Ramsey saved my restaurant, he really did, but I've got to continue it. I promise him that the next time he comes back, the food will be a 10. Pasadena, California. Home to the Kingston Cafe, an authentic Jamaican restaurant owned by Dr. Una Morris, who not only is a practicing radiologist, but is a three-time Olympian. All my life, I was able to accomplish the things I really wanted to do. And so I've started the restaurant because I really enjoy cooking, and there were no other Jamaican restaurant around. One the grill, jam, steak, medium rare. You know, my son is a manager, but we don't necessarily see things eye to eye. Keone, please be quiet. I'm talking. She doesn't really listen to my suggestions, and I've gotten to a point where no, I can't deal with this. Everything has to be cooked to order. That's, like that's you can't, so you can't cook everything yes, to order. Can. Impossible. Oh, Not here. She micromanages. She's focusing on small details like tablecloths being an inch off. It's not even. See, one side over there is long and the other. But the biggest focus should be why don't we have any more customers? I still see dusties. All of these have to change. See, you have to set standard. If you don't set standard, how you expect something to run well? These knife and forks are unacceptable. And I don't like how some of these look. You see? Sorry, Dr. Morris. Like everyone gets a bit nervous when she's around, even myself. Dad, yes. they need their food now. There are four people out there who haven't even gotten their second yet. Lots of cooks come in and out. They're there for one day, then you never see them again. Remember, the salt is one of the most important things. Not everybody can cook Jamaican food. We can't sell this. I don't like how it tastes at all. It's kind of hard for someone to expect you to do a job, and then they keep stepping in and not allowing you to do it. Mom, Mom, you got you to gotta let him work. That's not going to happen. When she's in the kitchen, it slows things down. This cannot be like this. The planting is hanging over the edges. It creates a conflict when getting plates out, and then we have to deal with the customers who are not happy. Sorry about the wait. It's cold. The restaurant's drowning, and we're all going down with it. If we don't get no customers, be lucky if you get five tables in all day. Oh, no, it's bad, isn't it? If it doesn't change soon, it's, it's going to die. I cannot sleep because I have so much debt, and my money from my retirement has almost dried up. Keone convinced me that Gordon Ramsay would help the restaurant. Something has to be done. Chef Ramsay is my last resort. After a phone call early this morning, Chef Ramsay decides to make a detour before heading to the restaurant. How are you, sir? I'm all right. Good to see you. Dr. Morris's son, Keone, has requested a meeting, and Chef Ramsay has obliged. How's it going? Um, difficult times. Ready? For sure. Probably doing about 30% of what we were doing over the summer. Wow. What's the number one problem, Kearney, in the restaurant? What is it? I would say my mother's management. Ready? Well, she's very much a micromanager and likes to roll with the iron fist. If I implement something, she would get angry and she would want to implement her version of way of doing things. Oh, dear. That's mixed messages and more importantly, how confusing for not just the customers, but for the team. Exactly. Like, you have to realize, like, she came from Jamaica, essentially by herself. She's a physician in radiology. Okay, it's fantastic. Um, she's been to the Olympics. Olympics? She, yes. That is one disciplined woman. Right? So she's so, tough? Yeah, absolutely. How Snails. tough on a scale of 1 to 10? 35. Oh, jeez. Yeah. My mom, what she says goes, and it definitely does have its strain on the business. It looks like a, a residence. I would have driven right by it. Hey, Mom. That's too small. That is too yeah, small. You can't say. Okay, I'll get another one. Let's go. Let's go. Here, That's Mom. too small. Can I take over in here? No, no, no. I'm fine. I'm fine. Hello. How are you? Good. Nice to see you. Just fun. I can hardly recognize there's a restaurant out there. <laughs> it looks like a house on the outside. Yeah. It doesn't look like a restaurant. It's very homey. Uh, where are we going? We're going to the oh. main dining room. Oh, okay. Main <laughs> dining room. Right. It's a strange entrance. Hello. Dr. Morris. How are you? 
I'm really blessed seeing you. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. My name is Yuna, but everybody has called me Dr. Morris. Wow, you. Okay, Doctor. Good to see you. What's that in there? That's curry goat. Excellent. Who made that? The chef, under the supervision of me. Wow. And are you always in the kitchen, or...? I, I do everything, just to make sure everything runs OK. Right. Okay. And who's the head chef? That would be me. Young man? Nice Good to meet to see you. you. And first name is? Daniel. The menu was designed by... Are you doing the menu? Yes. Good to meet you all. Can't wait to taste it. Thank you. And here's Excellent. the lunch menu. Thank you very much. And your server will be right with you. Thank you. Wow. Bizarre menu. Like something out of an office filing cabinet. Hi there. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm oh, very well, thank you. I'm Matthew. Great, great accent. Thank you. How long have you been here? Almost two years. I met Dr. Morris. Dr. Morris can be a little overbearing sometimes. It's just the way she wants everything to be perfect. Why do we have to call a doctor? Uh, that's just... she's Dr. Morris. But even in a restaurant? Yes. The doctor's office is next door. What, literally next door? Literally next door. What a headache. Oh, believe me. I think she's really taken on too much. I personally think she's slowly but surely running herself into an early grave. We have salad that needs to take out yeah. now. It's for Matthew. It doesn't matter. It needs to be no, taken we're, out. No, we're taking it right now. So I'll go for the uh, Jamaican patties. One veg mm -hmm. and one beef. Mm -hmm. Got to, got to, got to have the hot flashes. OK, yeah. so... Beef Which beef is your jerk chicken, right? That's our signature dish, yes. It looks like you're having some hot flashes. You all right? <laughs> yeah. Fine here. Is it? Yeah. Plus, it's wearing this get up as well. I mean, I feel like I'm at a funeral sometimes when I come to work. Wow, 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 wow. Famous jerk chicken married in secret jerk sauce. What's the secret behind it? Uh, the owner of the restaurant makes the sauce. Really? The owner pretty much does everything. I'm not even sure the cooks even make the sauce. Seriously? The chef doesn't even know the secret behind the sauce? No. Uh, ooh la la. I've just spotted, mind you, $20. That can't be right. Well, it must be a phenomenal oxtail at $20. Yeah, it's good. Let's have that as well. OK. Excellent. Now, Thank stop you. sweating. Yeah. And it's relax. Hot. OK, let's see what we got, guys. Two Jamaican patties, uh, one beef, one veggie, jerk chicken, and one oxtail. OK, let's go, you guys. We yeah. need to get the Jamaican patties first, please. Yes, Dr. Morris. Everything's soulless. It's, it's lacking charm, and it's like eating inside of a, an office block. Not good. T tell them let's go. They're, they're going. They can't go any faster. Do you have the jerk sauce? Yes. Sending out right now. Dan. Yes, Dr. Morris. We need the next plate. Are you working on this? Yes, Dr. Morris. OK. Beef patty? Yep. With a little, little bit of mild jerk sauce there. And this is the veggie patty. OK, I'll leave you to enjoy those. Thank you. <sighs> Absolutely gross. That sauce is dreadful. The pastry's raw. A soggy pile of dough. They would fucking kidnap me if I served that in Jamaica right now. How are the patties? Um, the sauce is dreadful. I don't like it myself. It's like a gloop. The sad news about the pate, the pastry's undercooked. It's hideous, hideous. Let me get rid of these for you. And this one is? The jerk chicken hot flashes. Is that the same sauce? Yes. Take that away, please, honey. Take this away. Yes, got it. Thank you. Look at my rice. It looks like a silicon implant. Perfectly formed. Ugh. Guys, do not put any more jerk sauce on his plate. He hates it. Ooh, nasty. Not an ounce of seasoning there. Cold. How's our signature dish? Bland as fuck. Cold chicken. Disgusting overcooked rice, and when was that chicken cooked? I couldn't tell you, to be honest with you. Go and ask doctor. This is dry as hell. Will do. Thank you. When was the chicken made, Dr. Morris? What? It, it didn't like it? No, it's a dry. You know why? Jerk chicken is dry in Jamaica. It's supposed to be dry. He doesn't eat Jamaican food every day. I eat it every day. So I don't know what he knows of jerk chicken. This is our oxtail stewed in lima beans. Uh. Cartilage everywhere. What a mess. $20. How's the uh, oxtail? Sadly, nothing's been trimmed, so it's full of fat. Bland. And the temperature. I mean, everything across the board here was sort of barely lukewarm. OK, let me get rid of that for you. What an embarrassment. It sucks, man. Like, I've, I've made points about this. Like Everything they said, you've already said before, huh? Yeah. I'm just glad that I was right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. 
Doctor, I would like a word with you. I'm not afraid of Chef Ramsay. I'd like to talk to you and Kieran. Even if he had horns, I wouldn't be afraid of him. OK, I'm, I'm embarrassed. I walk in a dining room that felt cold and just flat. When the food arrived, soulless. Everything was horrendous. Barely lukewarm, dry and tasteless. It's an insult to Jamaica. The patties, the actual pastry on the side was raw. As for the jerk sauce, disgusting. I'm going to say this um, from the get-go. I always thought that everything should be fresh cooked to order. Okay, Keone, Keone, could you be quiet? He's talking. <laughs> okay, let's move on, shall we? I've got bigger issues. Honestly, hot flashes? Isn't that a system of menopause? You not, can... Not necessarily. Not necessarily. It depends on how you perceive it. Forget the strange name. That dreadful jerk chicken, dry. Just a minute. Let me set you straight. Most jerk chicken in Jamaica are dry. In That's Jamaica, right. as a matter of fact, dry I, let me finish. I feel that the jerk chicken that we do are more moist than the one they do in Jamaica. Right. Now, let me tell you something also. L let me finish. Let me finish my sentence first. Mostly dry, I can accept. Dry and edible, I can't. I'm ready for an argument, because I am not going to sit here and kiss your ass for trying to tell me that is a Jamaican jerk chicken. I'm you're trying you. to lecture no, me. No, 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 I'm not trying to lecture you. I wouldn't you. walk into your you. hospital and attempt I, to tell you your job. I, I am telling you. I don't know what kind of herb from Jamaica you've been smoking, but that is disgusting crap. <laughs> Chef Ramsay came to this Jamaican restaurant hoping to find food rich in flavor, but instead it was bland as fuck. Not surprisingly, he had a heated discussion with the owner. Most jerk chicken in Jamaica are dry. Let me tell you something also. L let me finish. Let me finish my sentence first. That is disgusting crap. Still with a bad taste in his mouth, Chef Ramsay returns to Kingston Cafe to see how it operates in a dinner service. Where does the food um, serve from? The window? It's right there. That's the window there. You're kidding me. Try to work with what we got. Jesus Christ. Exactly. Stuff, jerk, coconut rum, shrimp. As the first orders come into the kitchen... OK, let's go, you guys. Let's go. Kingston Cafe's complimentary salads get sent out to the diners. Folks, your first course comes with every meal. It's yeah. difficult to eat out of this class. The salad I ordered, is it going to be, like, similar to this? It's going to be a little similar. It is. Can I change my order? Sure. What the fuck is that in the martini glass? The salad. Salad? Daniel. Yes. Who put the salad in a martini glass? Is there a doctor in the house? How many glasses? There's trays in the corner there that they take. Oh, my God. You are kidding me. Jesus Christ. Who's doing all this? Oh, my good God. Um, Gordon, if you continue like that, Jesus Christ actually going to appear. I hope so, because I think that's what's needed right now. Dressing a salad takes seconds. Tell me what's wrong with that. It gets soggy and it's Thank nasty. You. Turn around and tell the owner. It's soggy and it's nasty. It doesn't mean that it's really bad because he's never seen something like this before. I want you to dress the salad in a bowl. Okay. Okay. Even though he was just planning on observing, Chef Ramsay can't control himself and institutes his first change. We've got fresh salads dressed to order and in a bowl. Well done. Yeah. Excellent. But Dr. Morris... Make sure it is warm. ...is still the woman in charge. Can we give a better piece of chicken? I don't know how to Micromanaging whenever and wherever possible. Is that warm? It tastes like hot water. This is not Jamaican. There's no taste. Can I have another piece of chicken? I don't like You don't like this? OK. They didn't oh, like this. Who said that? The two old people right here? If they're not Jamaican, they're not going to like it. Dr. Morris doesn't really like to hear a lot of complaints about the food. She does what she knows and wants to do. What is that there? Chicken breast. Daniel. Yes. When was that cooked? That was cooked yesterday. Jesus Christ. Doctor. Yes. I can't believe we're doing this. That was cooked last night. It looks like a giraffe's tongue. OK. 
makes me feel validated, I guess, that the points that I've been making for months are the points that he's making now. Do you have a dog at home? Don't feed them that. Keone, just come over here. OK. Now, Keone, he's really getting me very upset. Suppose I punch him out. Because let me finish. He's right around. Let me finish, Keone. All I'm he out. did, um, Keone, please know. be quiet. First of all, he wants us to cook everything fresh. Why can't you do that? You can't. Yes, you can. Jamaican food cannot be cooked fresh every day. Do you understand that? Mom, we'll finish this later. <sighs> what is that there? Oh, my god. You are kidding me. Bags everywhere. Christ almighty. Oh, please. What's that in the microwave? Rice. When was that dropped? Four days ago. When I first worked here, I was like, oh, no. Really? Bags? Come on. What's the addiction to bags? Is it a medical thing, like donating blood in bags? Or, uh, everything we've got is, like, in bags. Where do you want to put it, then? If you're now going to tell me that rice stays better in a bag inside the steamer, madam, I'm really sorry, but you've lost the plot. I don't like when you disrespect me. So if you can tell me where you think I've disrespected you. You told me that I was crazy upstairs. I'm, I'll tell you why. The practices and how you're running a restaurant is packed with stupidity. I didn't say that you are demented. Didn't say anything like that at all. No. You. You specifically okay. say like this. You're... That's what you okay. say to me. Right. Do you now, hear what I said? If, let me finish. If I say that to you, how yes. would you feel? I'm not a delicate, dainty flower. It's going to take everything you say personally. But let me tell you something. The practices are ludicrous. Can I just show you something? Ready? No answer. Just, just feel that. It's frozen. It couldn't be frozen. Well, OK. Okay. It, should not, it, sh it should not be frozen. Okay. Well, it is frozen. No, no, no. No, don't tell me. Okay, no, okay. Let me, let me, another show. No, I've got to finish my sentence. Frozen, solid, disgusting, overcooked chicken. You're resisting it. That's fine. No, no, no. I'm trying to say it should not be frozen. They did it right. yesterday. I understand. Okay. But I've just told you it is. Right now, you're running a hospital kitchen full of bags. Fuck that. I'm out of here. He may say I'm crazy. But certain things he says about Jamaican food, I disagree with him. So I'm not crazy. I think the doctor needs a doctor. Who put the salad in the martini glass? After a very revealing dinner service, you're running a hospital kitchen full of bags. Chef Ramsay knows that Kingston Cafe will never overcome its problems unless Dr. Morris realizes she is causing the sickness not the cure. So mission number one this morning is a quick visit to the doctor's office, located right next door to the restaurant. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Do you mind if I come in? Come on in. When Chef Ramsey came to my office, I was surprised because I did not expect him to come back. OK, you're so smart, but you're unaware of the dramatic change that's needed to reposition this business. Why are you so stubborn? I'm not stubborn. The practices you thought were correct last night are backwards. You're in denial. Well, um, I'm not in denial, because I, I'm not in denial. I'm not here to fight you. Well... I'm here to help you. OK. Just help me understand where you are financially. What have you put into that restaurant in the last three years? Probably over $300,000. You know, I've just been using my credit card. I've borrowed money to just to maintain the restaurant. So how much longer can you continue along these lines? Probably a month, but that doesn't mean I'm going to quit. Well, you may not have a choice. Does your team, does your son, does your management understand? My, OK, my son doesn't tell you the honest truth. My son, he's only telling you what he thinks well, you want to hear. I appreciate you telling me. He doesn't tell you that he's not dependable and doesn't show up. Really? No, he doesn't. You don't understand. Well, I won't understand unless you tell me. You know, you don't understand what I'm going through. You ask him to do anything, he argues. If I say A, he argues about B. Do you know how I'm hurt that I have my kids who I have sacrificed my life for and they don't follow through on things that they need to do and I have to be doing everything? Well, this is a huge amount of pressure on one pair of shoulders. 
Isn't Kyoni worried about you in terms of... I don't think he does. I think the servers worry about me more than my son does. And you know what hurts me is because my mom died when I was 10. And I didn't have a mom when I grew up. And I just grew up and be determined to be somebody when I grew up. And you are. And you did it. And you accomplished it. Former Olympian, radiologist, doctor, come on. Don't let the negativity in the restaurant destroy your self-esteem. No wonder you're agitated. No wonder you're deeply concerned. The pressure on your shoulders is ridiculous. And you've done everything before this restaurant right in your life. You've got every right to continue with that self-esteem. And you're not going to be dragged down by that restaurant. This may be the first time in your life, Doctor, that you need help. And I'm here to do that for you. OK? I appreciate that. Let's not clash. I'm here to help. OK. OK? I appreciate that. Good. And I'm sorry. I appreciate your honesty. Don't be sorry. Come on. Come here. Come here. Come on. Oh, I really feel that I can trust him now, and that really means a lot to me. Because I'm, I'm not used to asking for help. <laughs> Yuna's in pain. She's desperate and she's got so much riding on her shoulders. The big question for me is, how committed is her son to helping his mum? Kioni. Yeah. I'm going to get straight to the point. What do you want out of this restaurant? And how much are you committed to helping it turn around? If you would have met me when the restaurant first opened, it would have been a completely different vibe. In what know? way? I mean, like, I was really passionate about this thing. I really was. I was like, look, Mom, this is a viable business, and I pushed so hard for it, and I wanted her to see that I was right, but she doesn't want to approach the business in a way that'll make it work. You seem to be in competition with your mother. It's, it's the nature of our relationship. Are you aware of the financial mess that your mother's in? She won't tell me. This place it's... is days away from closing. She has horrendous credit card bills. Right. Her retirement's in jeopardy. And let me tell you something. The most important lady in my life is my mother. Right. And what she's done for me has mm. been extraordinary. Hasn't your mum done more than you could ever imagine? Absolutely. And that's coming from a lady that had no mum. So drop the bravado and focus on your family, because if this restaurant goes down, you're going down with it. Got it? All right. Thank you. He's definitely right, and I know that she needs help. Love my mother to death, and I'm not leaving, you know, her to handle this by herself. After important breakthrough conversations with Yuna and Keone... Oh, my gosh! Chef Ramsay looks to energize the restaurant and improve the quality of the food. So tonight's dinner service will feature a barbecue on the patio with Keone at the helm. That's what you'll be wearing later. Don't dirty it. All right. I want everyone in the neighborhood lifting their windows up and... Mm, wow, where's that smell coming from? By running a delicious barbecue outside, wait, Chef Ramsay wants I... Yuna to realize the merits of serving Jamaican food that is not only completely fresh, but rich in flavor. So the restaurant's running in the restaurant, and the barbecue's taking place on the patio. Yeah. Any questions? No, Chef. OK. Jump in, have a little taste. Wow, that looks amazing. It smells good out here. The chicken is good. That means a lot coming from you. <laughs> I like the chicken. It's different, but it was good. I would give him a B plus, but I'm worried because people come in like the other one also, so you don't want to change too much. OK, you excited? Yeah, yes. very yes. much. Chef. Good. Let's go, because we're opening in half an hour. As the doors open for dinner, customers are offered the regular menu in the dining room or the special barbecue menu served on the patio. At any time, you can just go up and start serving yourself. Roasted corn with chili lime butter. The colors and the smells, everything was vibrant and exciting. That looks so good. It's pretty phenomenal. It's a really good idea, though. While Keone oversees the barbecue, which is already generating excitement, 
I need shrimp. They're defrosting right now. Head chef Daniel and the kitchen staff are unfortunately stuck in their same old habits. What in the fuck is that? Cups and bags, cups and bags. I thought the only thing that went in bags were bodies. I hate those bags. Ugh. Ugh. Gross. So where's the fresh rice for tonight? We're using the same rice that we made yesterday. Oh, this Fucking hell. I'm extremely frustrated. I wanted to make fresh beans and rice today. It was not the decision Dr. Morris wanted to make. You've got no fresh rice on there. OK. And apparently, doctor's orders are use the old rice in the bank. I I'm sorry. Oh. No. Hope they get our food out soon. In spite of the frequent use of the microwave. Guys, it's been 20 minutes on an order of Rudy shrimp. We're just waiting for it. The kitchen struggles to get food out to their customers. I could have grown a beard by the time they bring my meal. <laughs> in the dining room, the, the atmosphere was a little, like, down, where the food kept taking so long. People just weren't generally happy, whereas when I poked my head outside to the patio, people were laughing, they were having fun. It was almost like two different restaurants tonight. That, that was really good, uh, really good chicken. Jerry, great news. Look how popular the barbecue's becoming. Right. And that smell, mmm, nice. Makes you feel like you're back in Jamaica. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> From Jamaica to depressing. After what seemed like an eternity, customers in the dining room are finally receiving their food. <laughs> but it doesn't appear to be worth the wait. The fish is really dry. I think mm -hmm. it may be overcooked. Overcooked? OK, I'll let them know right now. What's wrong with that? They said it's too dry and overcooked. It's just gone out. Daniel. What? She just wants to try something else. Jesus, recommend the barbecue. We got a stunning piece of salmon out there, cooked perfectly. You want to try that? Go and get it now, quickly. Okay. Dry and overcooked. Is that still the? Is that the frozen stuff? Yes, that's the frozen stuff. It's rubbery. She's absolutely right. Thoroughly frustrated, Chef Ramsay jumps into action and puts together an entree of barbecue salmon. Let's hope she enjoys. All right. Can't believe we're serving barbecue food in the dining room. There we are. Chef Ramsay plated it for you. Oh my God. So there you are. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Barbecue. Oh my god. Next time, patio. Yeah. Enjoy. Yeah, thank you. Please. The smell. Yeah, it's beautiful. The fresh barbecue. And the verse, our hair is wonderful. It's beautiful. I really appreciate good. it. Good, good, thank good, good. You. Change is not easy, you know, but I was really impressed with how many people enjoy the barbecue tonight. So I'm willing to allow him to tell me how I can make it better. OK, tonight was a tale of two restaurants. Una, let's hear from the boss. Everybody out in the patio were very pleased. Inside, that was different. Inside, everything was bad. Yeah, you're right. We did confirm the barbecue worked, clearly. Tonight, we added something. But we might have to take something away, because it's been bugging me from the first minute I walked in here. Hang on a second, yeah? Irritating. Bloody hell. What is it? <laughs> Does anybody know? Could it be? What, what the fuck is going on? Oh, gosh. Fed up with the amount of food that is being reheated. Oh, my God. You are kidding me. Chef Ramsay... Have to take something away. Hang on a second, yeah? ..is determined to get rid of this damaging practice. There's more plastic here than in Beverly Hills. <laughs> Say goodbye to your bags. Looking at all that food, the first thing that comes to me was dollars. Yuna. Yes? I want you to succeed. Tonight, it stops. We get rid of the bags. We have a simple practice of cooking raw ingredients on the day and serving them. Trust me, if we don't make major changes on relaunching this restaurant, we don't stand a hope in hell. Good night. See you in the morning. Good night, Chef. Thank you. Jesus. It was kind of hard to take. I think it's really going to work out, Dr. Morris but he's, he wants me to trust him, so I'm going to do that. With Dr. Morris seemingly on board, 
Chef Ramsay and his team spend the next nine overnight hours bringing the Caribbean spirit into Kingston Cafe. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Here on this very patio, we had a taste of success, right? Yeah. Yep. Now the idea is to get that success in through there. Ready? Yep. yep. Let's go. In we go. Straight through. Oh my God! <laughs> How do you feel? This is fantastic. Chef Ramsay transformed this entire room into the Caribbean. Let's start with the Caribbean blue. We removed the artwork from the walls and got that cabana effect, that Caribbean feel, yes? Oh, my god. I feel like I'm at the beach. You know, all I need now is a nice cocktail in my hand, and it'll be a great day. Oh, my god. Una, if you say, oh, my god, any more times, trust me, he will appear. <laughs> it's the first thing he said to me when I arrived. Good. God. If you continue like that, Jesus Christ actually gonna appear. <laughs> oh my God. Have a look at the tabletops. Gone is that white linen. It's a casual, exciting, fun, inviting dining room. We've got some really nice woven steel placemats and beautiful china. And look what's on every table. Yahoo! It's Jamaican oh jerk sauce. Yeah. That's brilliant. Oh, oh I'm so happy. wow. I know it. Oh, thank you. Now, it's pretty phenomenal. I'm completely happy for my mother. You know, that's the biggest thing. <laughs> Along with the new decor, Chef Ramsay has replaced the tasteless, uninspiring old menu. And in its place, a tasty, fresh menu that celebrates Caribbean cuisine. Please take a look at the Kingston Cafe. Oh, my God. New dishes. That is so beautiful. Just have a look. Are the vibrant colors first off? Yes, it's really beautiful. More importantly, it's fresh. A taste of Jamaican platy for everything on there you could wish for in a Jamaican restaurant, yeah? The patties are phenomenal. The Kingston Special Barbecue, that will be done from outside. Barbecue chicken, kingfish, and a tamarind marinated skirt steak. It's beautiful. It looks good, right? Oh yes. yes. So are you going to look good? Because we have a little fun with these. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. 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 Look at that. Ah. And Matt, when you swept in black, we won't see it. <laughs> Thank you. Yes? Yes. Now, hold that. Pass them along. They've got your names in there. This shirt's definitely more casual feel than the white shirt and tie, and I really think this has got to go. Start tasting. That fish is perfect. Uh -huh. yeah. It really is. This is the best Jamaican food I've ever had. This is actually probably the best food full stop I've ever had. I love it. Mm -hmm. Taste this. Chef Ramsay so has opened so many avenues for me that I could never, ever repay him for his kindness. One more little surprise come through. When I first arrived driving by, I missed the place. It wasn't clear enough. Time to make a statement to Pasadena. Ready? Look at that! Oh, wow. it's beautiful. You can see it from miles away. Yes, that's true. Okay. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, it was really exciting seeing a new sign that was so visible and colorful. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it so much. Now, there's no way that anybody cannot see the sign. Let's make this service an amazing service, yes? OK. With Chef Ramsay's vision complete, it's time to relaunch this Pasadena restaurant. How are you guys today? Good. Welcome to the new and improved Kingston Cafe. As you can see, we've got the new menus down. I'll go with the jerk chicken and the barbecue. We're going to do a taste of Jamaican. All right, here we go. All right, you guys, we've got a taste of Jamaican platter, barbecued uh, jerk chicken, barbecued tamarind skirt steak. May I have some chips, please? Only minutes into dinner service. Kimani, appetizer platter. Appetizers are leaving the kitchen at a steady pace. Tuna ceviche and lobster fritters are going to come. It's really good. And more importantly, customers are thrilled with what they are receiving. That is so good, isn't it? But the real pressure is about to hit. We're getting backed up on tickets. Jesus Christ. And head chef Daniel is already a little flustered. Come on, guys. K-13. K-13? They already got their food. K-13 already got their food. Oh, no. K-13 has already had their food. Why are we sending food twice? Who's organizing this? It is me. I need one person to start taking control. Yes, Chef. I beg you. Yes. 
What tables go next, please? So that is for P4. So P4, good. So let's, let's all sing off the same page. Yes. And we send P4 together. Yes. I was mixing up some orders, sending things to the wrong tables. And that's, that's unexcusable. Let's do the red snapper. I've got that. Here. We'll go red snapper. These are the OK. Oh, no. It's black as hell. Why? It overcooked. No, no, Sorry, look, chef. Look at me. Just tell me why, so I can help you. I, let me... I so want you to succeed. So do I, chef. Not I'm... serving food like that, you don't. It's relaunch night at the Kingston Cafe. And after a promising start... Oh, no. Head chef Daniel has lost his composure... Jesus Christ. ...and his standards. It's black as hell. Things just weren't going the way we thought they would. It overcooked. And you gave it to the girl to send. I let me redo it. That table over there, they were seated after us, and they'd already eaten. The food wasn't coming out on time, and it made us look bad. It was going downhill fast. Guys, I'm sorry about this, guys. I can assure you it is coming out. OK, Keanu, what about the people who've been here for an hour? Mom, what can we do? Just two seconds, look, two seconds, come here. I need someone getting a grip of this now and fucking waking them up because we're gonna make ourselves look stupid. Right. Yeah, Dan's gotta step up to the plate. Yep. And you need to get them together a little bit, yeah? Rally right. them round, yeah? All right. Yeah, we're sinking and we're falling behind. All right. Dan, what please, just make sure that anything that you're doing, you're doing two up or three up because I understand we're falling behind. Keone's your man. Exactly. You're the ace. Yes, Off yes. the same fucking page. Yes, yeah. This is what I need you guys to start doing. Get yeah. rolls of chips and we're gonna start giving them to the table so they can munch on them while they're waiting on the food, okay? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Everybody gets chips. Here's a little chips to hold you over. This is really good. Hey, guys, there's also dessert that's floating around. OK, so make somebody else do it. Mom, mom. Give me the ticket. I take it in the back and get no, it done. No, mom, no. You're not knowing what's going on, mom. Hmm. I definitely want my mom to understand I can make this thing work. Walk around, talk to the guests. You're more important than I can't than talk to them no, because no, there's no, no food. No, 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 you can't, mom. You can't. I don't want to argue with you. You like to argue too This much. isn't an argument. OK, what number is this, K7? Seven, mom, 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 stand away from this area. You can't help, Mom, not right now. I need two seconds with you, please. The shrimp uh, came back right now. Got to let him do it. Okay. Got to let Keone do it. He's trying. Thank you. Yeah, he's showing that level of commitment. Let him do it. Okay. Smooth the dining room, OK? 30 seconds bobbing around each little table. OK, let him do it. Let him find his voice. I just want to finish this order right here, guys. It's going too slow, Dan. Yeah, I understand that. You can put more shrimp in there than that, right? No, I can't. I see you. You can at least fit one more in there. This is almost an hour on this ticket. There you go. Gioni's leadership has helped stabilize the kitchen. Can you work on four beef patties and two jerk wings? Allowing customers to finally get a taste of the new Kingston Cafe. Whoa. Oh, that looks amazing. Oh, wow. Beautiful. I have the prettiest place. I need uh, another coconut rum shrimp. Finally. I would definitely come back just for this. We just need to finish this. How is everybody doing? We love it. We're enjoying just that on that. Good. I really appreciate that. I guarantee to you, it will be going to be so much faster and better, OK? The fact that I have opened up and is committed to keep his menu, that's a big thing for me. Well, let me tell you, I grew up on patties in Jamaica, in Kingston. That squash patty was absolutely amazing. It took me back to my childhood days. Really? Yes. yes. Thank you, guys. Yes, great. All right, guys, dinner service is over. Yeah, great. OK, what a night, yeah? But we had a buzz out there on the patio and a buzz in the dining room, right? The customers clearly loved the food. That's good. Clearly, we did have a problem. <sighs> But there was one person that did step up and helped in a big way to turn things around. Keone. Keone, thank you. Well done, yes. boss. Thank you. Good job. Tonight, Keone really stepped up to the plate. I'm so proud of them. He did a fantastic job. To all of you, cook your hearts out and serve with a smile. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Gordon. Oh, no, can I just have a little word with you through there? Yes? Thank you. It's been a gigantic step forward, and we are only going to get better. Now, Keone, he proved he's capable. Oh, yeah. I know he is. Very intelligent young man. I know, but you have a tough decision in front. If you're going to make him part of the business, then commit to doing that. OK. Either you make him feel like a partner in the business, or you let him go. 
you cut the apron strings. One or the other, okay? Okay. Your decision. Okay. Now, there's one more thing. Do you fancy a race? Oh, you want to run? Yeah. Okay, come. No, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. Oh, <laughs> dogs. God bless you. Initially, I didn't like Chef Ramsay. I'm telling you. to let you no. Let me finish. But now I realize yes. that he has a wonderful nice. heart. He's going to be so proud of us when he comes back. What a week. My goodness me. I only hope that this Olympian, Dr. Mother, can now add successful restaurateur to her resume. Why? Because she deserves it. Big time. Let me finish. Let me finish. Shortly after Chef Ramsay's departure, Yuna decided to encourage Keone to concentrate on his education and step back from the restaurant. And you know, I'll always love you. Don't care you and I fight and I, you know? Of course. Yuna, however, is more dedicated than ever. She is committed to cooking fresh, collaborating with her staff, and maintaining the standards Chef Ramsay put in place. Please enjoy it. As long as I follow what Coach Ramsey explained to me what we need to do. It has to look good and it has to taste good. The future of Kingston Cafe looks great. Located on the Mississippi River, not far from the Gulf of Mexico, is the New Orleans suburb of Metairie, a tight-knit community that is home to Zeke's, a neighborhood restaurant opened in 2002 by a charismatic entrepreneur named Zeke Ugnast. <laughs> Zeke was six foot four, big and goofy, but you know what? The man knew how to have a good time, and he knew how to run a pretty good restaurant. Everyone came to Zeke's when it first opened because there was just a good vibe in this place. Good people, food was always good. I mean, we used to do 750 people in here on a Friday night. But in 2005, Zeke tragically died during Hurricane Katrina, and the ownership and the direction of the restaurant was up in the air. After Katrina, this place was in limbo. So the Cortello saw it, and then they pretty much took on the place. Hi, guys. How are y'all tonight? Welcome to Zeke's. When we bought Zeke's, we chose to keep the name because Zeke's did a very good business, and that just made business sense to us. All right, guys. First guest. When Daryl first took over, pretty much changed everything. He cut staff. He cut product. He went to uh, lesser quality. Wouldn't feed that to your dog. And then on top of that, he raised the prices. It's expensive. It's a little over the top. I feel as though I'm completely handcuffed in the kitchen. Dude, I'd love to do like a steam clams. That's not us. I don't think that's us. You know what I'm saying? I'm always trying to beg him or plea him. Can we try that? Can we do this? And Daryl doesn't allow it. I'm trying to make chicken salad out of chicken shit. I ask myself all the time, why do I even stay here? Uh-uh, no sitting on the job servers here are all talked down to or disrespected. People just don't feel appreciated. Daryl cut my pay in the last six months. I can't afford raises right now. And it's made me work more hours since he cut my pay. Daryl, we got three orders of green tomatoes left. Cutting them a little thick, too, I'll tell you that. I'm not looking to squeak by. I'm looking for financial rewards in this business. Okay, short change. That kind of offended a lot of Zeke's regulars. And this has just steadily declined. Meatballs, plain and bland. Unless he's got a pot of gold stashed somewhere, there's no way this restaurant will last, you know, a month. All right. Payroll was today. How'd we do? <laughs> That's not a good question. Financially, we are not doing great. Well, we got to catch up somewhere. It's not happening. We're not going to make it if we don't have Chef Ramsey come in and tell us what he thinks we can do differently to change this. Because obviously, what we're doing, it's not really working. Physically, emotionally, it's been hard. I have put everything I can possibly put into Zeke's, but seats aren't full, so something's going on, and we're killing ourselves trying to find out. Before heading to Zeke's, Gordon has arranged to meet some Metairie locals to gain some insight into the restaurant and the neighborhood. Oh, doing good. How are we doing this morning? Very well indeed, thank you. Morning. Morning. How are we? Now tell me about the area, Metri. What does it, uh, what does it stand for? So it's a town on the East Bank. Uh-huh. They got a lot of people. They got some good Russian sub there. And have you heard of a restaurant called Zeke's? We used to go there quite a bit. I haven't been there in a while, but before Katrina, we used to go there quite a bit. Before Katrina, we feel like every product it was great. But after Katrina, we probably only been there once or twice. What's the difference in food? It got pricey and average. Oh, really? Yeah. The quality has gone down quite a bit. 
Yeah. And, uh, the atmosphere wasn't the same. They had lost the magic, the feel of the restaurant. Right, man, just changed. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. After hearing unfavorable reviews, Chef Ramsay heads over to Zeke's to continue his investigation. And there is nothing more telling than lunch. Hello. Well, hello, Chef Ramsay. Welcome to Zeke's. I'm very happy to be here. Hello. Nice to meet you. Definitely. Come right this way. All right, guys, I think we got a special guest. Heard that. Heard that. Help me get up to speed. You are the owner. Yeah. You run the business with Zeke? My husband, no, my husband is Daryl. Daryl, and where is he? He is in the kitchen. So, who's Zeke? Zeke was the original man who opened the restaurant, um, passed away right after Katrina. Tower. And we purchased it from his estate, so we've had it for almost five years. What did you change after you bought it? The menu items are similar. Okay, um, good. We've definitely taken some off and changed some recipes. And the chef is the same? Emil is the kitchen Emil. manager, yes. Whose decision is it with the new dishes? So My husband, Daryl. He's got a couple of his recipes on the menu. And where did he train as a chef? He's never trained as a chef. If you're not a chef, why would you put dishes on the menu? Being in the business, I guess. OK. Um, Does the chef agree with those dishes, or is it just because he's the owner, that's why he gets them on? I guess talk to him about it. OK, let me have a look at the menu. OK. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Wow. Hello. Hi, how are you today? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm well, I'm so thank happy you. to be in Louisiana. My first time. Good. Thank welcome. you. Your first name is? Candice. Candice. I saw on the menu the oyster... Oysters Cortello. It's an invented dish for our restaurant. The Cortellos is Daryl and Ellen, so they made they made it up. So the owners have named an oyster after them? Yes, they have. They bought the restaurant, now you want your name on the menu. Yes. Sounds like someone's struggling for power. <laughs> I've got to try one. OK. Yeah. And I must have some boiled shrimp. Boiled shrimp. And what specials do you have, my darling? We have a chicken fried steak today. Let's go for it. We do have also traditional bread pudding. Let's go for that. And I think we're done. OK. Thank you. Look what I got. All right, here we go. When Daryl got here, he kind of implemented his own menu. It really gets frustrating because Daryl really has no idea, culinary-wise, what he's doing. Candace, you ready? I'm going to take out the boiled chef to him. Chef Ramsay is going to love this food. It's simple food, it's basic food, it's feel-good food, but it's done very well and fresh. OK. Boiled mm. shrimp. Thanks, Tony. My first Louisiana shrimp. Yeah, everything's soft. They should peel easily and sort of pop out the shell, but I'm struggling to peel them. Mm. I mean, that is nasty. What I'm struggling for here is the lack of freshness. They feel and taste slightly mushy, which is a big disappointment. Candice, where are the shrimps fresh? They're fresh frozen. They're fresh frozen. frozen. I know it's kind of an oxymoron. But you can buy fresh shrimp yes. within a mile from Yes, there. yes. The frozen shrimp tastes like shit. Sorry. Crap. <laughs> I wanted to know why we would get frozen shrimp when you can go to, like, the market and get them fresh every day. It's not uncommon to have frozen shrimp because some things are OK frozen. How we look on the oysters? Coming right now. All right. Wow, that back wall is hideous. What a mess. Yeah. You got two seconds, please? Yes. And what's with the, uh, the swamp decor? <laughs> Whose idea was that? Um, mine and my husband's. To eat in a swamp? For children or for adults? For both. For both. For both. Oysters Cortello. That's my worst thing. All right, here we go. OK, thank you. All right. What the hell is that? These are the Oysters Cortello. Oysters Cortello. So I suppose you go like that. Wow, they're dreadful. Oysters named after the owner. I certainly wouldn't put my name on that. I wouldn't even put my enemy's name on that. Take it for you? Mm -hmm. OK. Thank you. That's depressing, isn't it? No. Just terrible. Oysters Cortello, I don't know what to say about that. I eat them myself. I think they're delicious. Absolutely delicious. Now, what do you say? Oysters Cortello just ain't working. This is killing me not to know what he's saying. This is the fried chicken steak, right? Correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Bland as anything. No seasoning, no care. Look at that. Candice, what the hell is that? 
It looks like it's just had a giraffe's tongue cut out and deep fat fried. People complain that the quality of the food here is horrible. Unbelievable. Daryl's not listening to the feedback that he gets, and he's going to do what he wants to do. Daryl. Yep. He said that it looks like somebody cut out a giraffe's tongue, battered, and fried it. I'm not going to agree with that. It didn't look that way to me. I mean, that's what normally goes out. It's a good product. So it looked like we cut out a giraffe's tongue. Wow, wow, wow. Jesus. Thanks, Tommy. Doesn't look fantastic. But it tastes delicious. Who made that? Emil, it makes it. Mm -mm -mm. I'm just so happy that Chef Ramsey likes the bread pudding. It feels great to end on a good note. Love the bread pudding. You like the bread pudding? Good. There we go. Loved it. I took full responsibility for bread pudding. That is all me. Daryl doesn't really have influence on that. Thank God. Thank God he likes something I did. I'll take that any day. Hello. Hello, Chef. And this is? Daryl. Daryl. The owner. Yes, Chef. Introduce me to your uh, brigade. Chef Emil, Marcos. Emil, good yes, to see you, buddy. Nice to Likewise. meet you. Likewise. Jason Carpenter. Jason, good to see you. Chef. There's a lot of things that, that need changing, and, you know, Daryl is, is one of them. Can I talk about lunch? Yes. My god, what a disaster. The food is below standard. Why wouldn't you buy fresh shrimp? I simply don't have the time to go to the market. Excuse me? Where are we? We're Come in New on. Orleans. Come on, big boy. Chicken fried steak. Disaster. What cut of meat was that? Not a very good cut. No. Are you proud to serve that food? No, sir. Was that the same quality of steak that we were using years ago? No, sir. Then why have you changed the standard? Um, it's, it's up to Daryl. Is that a cutting corner method to save no, money? No, or? no, Chef, everything is shit to you. Yeah. But we had diners eating all lunch, full dining room, but nothing <laughs> sent back. Do you honestly think, just because they don't send it back, that your food is fucking amazing? That's good enough for you to continue. No, you can't be that fucking stupid. Point taken. If they want to be that stupid, you've got no chance. I don't buy the fact that it's bad quality food. That's bullshit. Hard to believe this was once a great place. After receiving some harsh words from Chef Ramsay, the food is below standard. Daryl has some words of his own. You know, Chef says everything is shit. It's embarrassing. There's nothing good about the menu. Uh, you know, I don't buy that shit. I will never believe the food is shit. You're not going to come I've been eating this food all my life. Chef Ramsay doesn't own a world on food. That's it. I mean, you cut all the food down you want. You can't break me. It's an hour before dinner service, and Chef Ramsay hopes a private meeting with the two chefs, Emil and Jason, can shed some light on the restaurant's main issues. OK. So, I don't get it. Some of the things I encountered there today were just awful. That can't be your wish to cook with frozen ingredients. We talk about it every day, and yep. it just gets swept under the table. I tell him the second he starts cutting the cost, you yep. get a cheaper product. Yep. And you know it's going to taste like shit, and trying to explain that to him, yep. just like, you know, is, is it's like talking to this wall right here. And how long has it been going on like that? Since the right around the time he took over. The only thing Daryl and Ellen see is money, and that's what scares me. Their whole purpose is money, 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 money. We feel like our hands are so tied. As far as ordering goes, everything goes, the only other option was to leave. Me and him both go. Yes. Yeah. You know, what do you do? Just walk out the place? I mean, we got a lot of personal memories in this place, just to yeah. walk out of it. Granted, I, I get that, but it doesn't stop you from having your voice. Everybody here is just kind of waiting for the place to belly up and go find a new job somewhere else. I'm here to help put this freaking place back on the map. Yes, sir. You're absolutely right. Yes, we have only two options, Chef Ramsey or God, and I don't think the second coming's happening anytime soon. Thanks for the catch-up. Thank you. Thank you. After gaining some insight from Jason and Emil... Hey, I need shrimp portioned. Chef Ramsey is eager to see how this restaurant functions in a dinner service. Uh, how does this work? Uh, Emil. When were these done? Um, last night. Why are they bagged? He portions them out to order. Ready? What's the idea of putting everything in bags? Portion so, size. Portion size. 
I like to have everything in quantitative perspective. If I give too much, you get a happy customer here. You don't get a good customer. They're happy because they're getting three times what they should be getting. I'm getting nothing. I don't make money on that. It's food. You know, we're not cutting uh, piping for bathrooms. Hi, welcome to Zeke's. How many do we have in the party? Four. It's Chef Ramsay's first time in Louisiana. Come right this way, please. And not surprisingly, Zeke's is completely booked. And tonight our special is lasagna. Come on, lasagna something. I got a seafood platter, no oyster sub shrimp. I'm at the expo station. I like to see all the food go out. Side of new potatoes, Daryl. I uh, make sure every dish goes out like I want it to go out. Can I run anything? Nope. Shrimp platter. Can any of that go? I'm waiting on dishes to complete the order. It doesn't concern you that food's just dying in the window? But we're pushing as hard as we can. Bloody hell. Yeah. Yeah. It's been here a long time. For expediting is one thing. Standing here and saying nothing is another. Wow, fucking hell. It's an hour into dinner service, and the first wave of food is finally making its way out to the customers. Sorry about the wait. They are backed up. Everybody's food at the table now. Let me get uh, your server. My apologies. And the food isn't the only thing that's getting a chilly reception. Can I ask something? Do you mind not standing there like that? It's so dour. I think you can be more proactive. I don't want to hover, you know. But you can make yourself busy. OK, I got it. I'm ready. Cheers. Thank you. All right, look what I got. What's that one? Lasagna. Lasagna. When was the lasagna made? Last Thursday. Last Thursday. And today's Thursday, right? Correct. Serving the stuff from a week ago. Help me to understand that, uh, that stupidity. Well, we made the, made the pan, we didn't sell it all. It's wrapped up in portions and it's approached. I thought that's a bad thing. Lasagna, it's all done fresh and cooked. And uh, we'll wrap the portions up separately. We'll put them in the freezer. It works is the best lasagna you're going to get. Is this special, right? Yes, it is. OK, so how the fuck is that special in your tiny mind when it was cooked a week ago? I don't have a tiny mind. I'm telling you you have a tiny mind. It can't be that special if you're going to stand here and tell me that this, it's special. The, the product is good. Daryl runs his kitchen with 90% bravado, and, you know, the other 10%, he just wings it. This is a good product. This is good food. Oh, man. My god. It's getting worse. Yeah, he's a tough nut, your uh, expediter. So we have a special today. When do you think that lasagna was made? Today. Homemade lasagna? Right. Last Thursday. How could it be that special when it's from a week ago? Well, you know, it's frozen, so it's not like sitting there getting mildew on it. And our customers absolutely the love the lasagna. I don't think that's our biggest issue, is lasagna. I mean, that's absolutely incorrect. What do you think they would feel like if you told them the day special was cooked a week ago, frozen? I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not sure they would probably be surprised that it was so good and that it was made last week and frozen. Shall I ask them all? Would you like me to walk with you? I know I'm not going to walk, I'm going to stand up and shout. Oh, really? <laughs> When you come out to restaurants and you read today's specials, for instance, a beautiful homemade lasagna, would you expect that lasagna to be made today? Yes! yes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, how many of you have ordered lasagna? How would you feel if I told you all that today's lasagna that's been served was made a week ago? This is humiliating. After making a shocking discovery about today's special... When was the lasagna made? Last Thursday. Chef Ramsay made an announcement. Today's lasagna that's been served was made a week ago. <laughs> that is not sitting well with customers. My apologies to those that have ordered the lasagna. Have a look at the potential other specials. Bon appétit. Thank you. Thank you. This is humiliating. It's absolutely better, of course, when it's fresh and it's served right out of the pan, but it's not horrible. I've just told the customers that today's lasagna was reheated from a week ago. The feedback was shock horror. 86 of lasagna. Yes, sir. Yeah? With Chef Ramsay's announcement fresh in their minds... Get a, uh, get a check. Get the check, OK. Customers have seemed to have lost their appetite. Fuck me. Did y'all eat already? <laughs> yeah, I had the lasagna. <laughs> After witnessing a dinner service full of problems, 
You got two seconds, please? Yes, absolutely. Chef Ramsay is anxious to have a chat with the owners. Oh, dear. Did you hear the customers tonight when I told them lasagna was a week old? Did you hear? Here's what happens. Cook lasagna, and it doesn't sell. Do you throw it away? No, we don't throw it away. We wrap it. I'm here to help, but I tell you what, I can't help you when you're standing there and trying to come up with excuses to why customers pay good money for frozen shit that cooked a week ago, and you call it a special. We don't feel like it puts out an awful product. You don't give a shit about food. It's not true. Your passion's about portion control, measurements, frozen foods, reheated in a microwave. Restaurants don't run like this. Disagree. I disagree with that also, definitely. Trust me, you are not a fucking restaurateur. You're the owner? You're paying rent here? When you start dealing with all this crap and your name's on that lease, then you tell me what you want to do. After being stonewalled by owners in denial... Morning. Good morning, sir. Chef Ramsay has called a staff meeting. Two minutes, please. Hoping to bring all of the restaurant's issues into the open. OK. I want you to tell me the frustrations, the anger, and the things that really upset you the most. Emil. Um, I, I just feel as though I'm getting pounded with a mallet constantly when I walk into this place. I went from working 40 hours to working about 50 for $400 a week. That pisses me off. I feel that we don't get any respect. I'm here all the time. I don't get to eat lunch. I should have a meal. I should have a shift meal. This is messed up. We are talked down to like we're dirt. And it's not right. Listen, um, I really appreciate the openness and the honesty. I knew it was bad, but I didn't quite understand it. It hit that um, level of hurt. I think it's just sad that we're all sitting here and that we actually have to even beat at this point. I think we all, the whole group of us here, are pretty much struggling. No one's getting that message across. I need to get through to them. Daryl and Ellen are about to arrive. I want you to tell them. Everybody was saying what they wanted to say and getting it off their chest. But it's kind of different from telling Chef Ramsay versus telling Daryl. Don't be nervous. I don't want you to be afraid. I've got your back. OK? And here they are. Good morning. Good morning. I've been here having a staff meeting. Um, we've gone through some issues um, this morning that's been bothering them. But rather than me trying to tell you how they feel, I think they should speak. Certainly. Who's going to go first? I go first. I don't feel as though we all gain much respect around here. And I don't think that you, as an owner, have our back. Candace, Ashley, is that how you feel? You really do talk to us like dirt sometimes. My intent is not to talk down to somebody. But that's how it comes out. Jason, talk to Daryl, please. My biggest problem that I have is just, I don't think you have a clue as to how this place runs. Me? Yeah. Wow. I think that you're so stuck on the numbers, the actual essence of having a restaurant and serving good food and giving customer service and happy employees. That, that's gone. I, I don't understand. We hear it every single night, every single day, from our customers what needs to be changed and why they don't come back. We let you know these things, and you don't give a shit. Nothing's done. You don't care. Wow. Pay, pay is ridiculous here. I really don't want to break down, because I've been here a long time. And I'm not getting paid jack shit. For somebody to be here that long. I've been here 
here since 2006. Why haven't I never got a pay raise? OK, let me say something real quick. Since we're all telling the truth, first of all, Daryl and I have taken thousands and thousands of dollars out of our personal account to pay your paychecks. So why not just close the place down? We're not giving up. We don't want to give up. If you want to give up, that's fine. This isn't I'm your business. We don't want to leave each other because we all love each other. We don't want to leave. Not at all. But I need to make money to support my family. You know what? So do we. Y'all are acting like it's us against y'all, and it's not. This is a business where we have costs and expenses. And I ask you to take that pay cut. It's either that or labor costs get so high, I'm out. But you can go on five vacations in the summer. And you're struggling for money. Right. That is fucked up. Period. If you don't want to be here, don't be here. After Chef Ramsay arranged for the staff to air their grievances, I don't think you have a clue as to how this place runs. The defiant owners are not having any of it. If you don't want to be here, don't be here. If I were piling up money back there, then I could see you being pissed off. But we're not piling up money back there. I can't show appreciation in dollars at this point. They maybe have this picture of me with this pile of money going, ha, 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 nobody's going to get it. We don't have the money. I'm accepting the truth from you guys. Accept it from me, please. Things aren't going well, I understand that. But in terms of morale, there's an air of discontent. They feel abused. And I'm not saying the staff are perfect, but you're the owners, and you set an example. We have to fix what's broken within. So how about starting over again and turning the page and the beginning of a new chapter? I understand those frustrations. You are wonderful people. So I want you all here, and you will have my respect. I guarantee that from me. And there's a lot of love for you guys from Ellen and I, and I truly mean that. Good. We did make some progress. The air is clearer. OK, it's a new day here at Zeke's. I've got some ideas that I need to uh, put into place to really start putting this place back on the map. Thank you. Honestly, I don't think that Daryl and Ellen heard what, what we were saying. He was just saying what was right, just to get Chef Ramsay off of his back. We'll see what happens. Oh, Lord. After attempting to open Daryl and Ellen's eyes to the staff morale problems, Chef Ramsay has devised a plan to test the chefs and showcase their abilities. OK, it's been so obvious that you've been handcuffed by Daryl. And here's what I want you to do. Show Daryl how creative, how inspirational, how exciting you can be with seafood. There's a grocery store literally two miles away from here, OK? Have a look at the ingredients, get inspired, come back, get creative. I want to see that on a plate, yeah? Thank you, Chef. Good. Right now, I'm pretty jacked up. Gordon Ramsay himself said, Jason, time for you to be inspired. Go let it happen. Let's see what you got. All right, let's see what they got fresh. How may I help you? Redfish fresh? fresh? Just put it out an hour and a half ago. That's what we're looking for. It's extremely liberating to have this freedom to showcase and do what we want to do, cook good food. Right, Very nice to meet, you. Thanks, to meet you. Thanks, guys. I am uh, looking for red onions with uh, asparagus. Just do a red pepper. This will be the last thing I get. I'm ready to rod. There it is. There it is. Showcase the skills. So yeah. happy. Very Think nice. of something creative and really let it go, yeah? Yes. Sir. Okay, off we go, guys, yeah? Yeah, I'm gonna do a chicken fried steak at the same time. Okay? Brilliant. Own it, yeah? Yes, chef. You can put a little lime juice in there? Yes. More yeah, lime just... juice. I'm not done yet with it. Okay, good. Yeah, I love the idea. The bacon and cheddar grits. Cheddar. Nice. So in terms of the inspiration, tell me what it is. Try to keep it southern with the grits, fresh with the salmon, and classic with the capers, with the onions, with the tomatoes. Good. Keep it with the New Orleans steam, redfish, and then grilled vegetables, fresh rice, fresh ingredients. It's just a, a fun dish. Pretty good job. The difference is night and day, let me tell you that. Beautiful. Now, you say nothing. You didn't cook them. I cooked them. Do you understand? Yes. OK, let's go. Come over, guys. Please. Wow, look at that. You think of Louisiana, first thing you think of is freshness. But when I walked into your restaurant, what I didn't expect was frozen seafood. So I got my team to get some ingredients for me. It's like, you both just have a little taste. Taste the freshness. A beautiful charbroiled salmon done with grits. 
creamy, tasty. It's absolutely phenomenal. Then I got hold of some uh, redfish, marinated zucchini with some rice and a really nice mango salsa. Mm. Oh my gosh, this redfish is delicious. It's phenomenal. It's absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal? Delicious. Absolutely. Yeah. Watching them eat my dish and not knowing that it was mine and to say that, you know, it looked like it was from their heart. I'd like you to have a little taste of that chicken fried steak. I just lightly pounded it and then fried it twice. So it should just melt in your mouth. It does yeah. melt, yeah. literally. Literally melted, Jeff. I couldn't believe how good it was. The presentation was beautiful, and it was fresh yeah. ingredients, and they tasted wonderful. They're all absolutely phenomenal. And you taste the difference? Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. There's something you need to know about the seafood dishes. I didn't cook them. The two chefs put those dishes together. Wow. But the seafood dishes mm -hmm. are your boys. Delicious, absolutely. Wow. Phenom they really are, they're phenomenal. It really opened my eyes to what I, I, I wasn't letting them do, honestly. Food is art, and I was not letting them create their art. These aren't just delicious. They're beautiful, and they come from right inside you. I know that. You did a fantastic job. It feels really good that Daryl and Ellen recognize my potential, and I think that my abilities have been shown, and hopefully this is the first step forward. This is the new Zeke's. I can see that's what we're looking for. And all I could really think to myself was, about fucking time you see it. Really good job. Well done. It's a good After finally having at least a small breakthrough with the owners, Chef Ramsay decides to have his team work through the night on the biggest restaurant makeover they have ever done. Right, good morning. Morning, Chef. Excited? Are you ready to see the New Zeeks? Yes. yes. Let's go. Welcome to the New Zeeks. Here we go. Oh, Come in, wow. please. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? In, in, oh. in. Oh, nice. Oh, man, that's oh, my nice. gosh. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. Oh, my God. Let's start with the walls. Gone is the swamp. Look at all the, the, all the old doors. Reclaimed doors. It's got that nostalgia, and it's got that comfort feel, right? Feel like home. Look at this. You've got the most amazing chairs, brand new chairs. It just feels authentic. Let me say this, please. please. You have found our identity. Wonderful. This is Wonderful. us. I'm astonished. I mean, truly. I didn't really have any expectations, but this has surpassed anything I could possibly imagine. There is one more thing I'd like to show you. <laughs> You're going to start peeing your pants. Oh, man, that's it. Nice. Oh, that's nice. There we are, our boil house. <gasps> oh, my god. From shucking your oysters to cooking your shrimp, this is going to be a substantial part of the menu. And Emil, it's going to take so much pressure off you and Jason. This should just run on its own, and it should almost double the turnover. Did I see you smile again? That's the second time in 24 hours. Uh -huh. Dude, huh? they're going to arrest you for being too happy. <laughs> Jeff Ramsey has given this staff, this place, my family, our friends, our customers, a new beginning. It's unbelievable. Honestly, when people would ask me where I work, I would never say Zeke's. I just say I'm a cook. Mm -hmm. No, I, I'm, I'm proud to say that I work here. A new beginning and a new identity for Zeke's. Along with making the decor more inviting, Chef Ramsay has replaced Zeke's outdated, stale menu with a modern update of classic New Orleans cuisine. Oh, my gosh. My goodness me. This is going to put Zeke's back on the map. Smell it. Be careful. It's fresh. <laughs> Every dish is absolutely beautiful. OK, let's start off. Top of the table. Zeke's house boil, yes. Bucket of shrimps, yes. Bucket of blue crabs. A great sharing, festive, localized bucket. Push them, okay? Back in the menu, the entrees. Pecan crusted catfish, so with a classic tartar sauce and a herb salad. Country fried steak, big hit. Say no more, such a gravy. Delicious, slightly heated in that gravy. So you've got that nice little burn at the back of your throat. Blackened alligator, wonderful Creole sauce. Absolutely delicious. Because this has now become not the old Zeke's, your Zeke's. Thank you. You've got your identity. Now make it yours. Absolutely incredible. Beautiful. Come here. Come here. The way Chef created the menu and the dishes, uh, they don't have a menu like that around here. Dig in. Enjoy. So not only do we have something great to put on the table, but it's not anywhere around. Nobody else has it. Oh, Did you taste the cornbread? The menu is phenomenal. I'm proud to have it and excited and can't wait for everybody else to come in and try it. It's awesome. delicious. I feel right now we have the most diverse Louisiana Southern menu. I mean, we very well may have the best menu. Rich in flavor, rich in texture. Wow. 
Hi guys, welcome to Zeke's. The community of Metairie had a love affair with this restaurant that went sour. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Shrimps are amazing. Chef Ramsay's revamp and tonight's relaunch will be a strong indicator if it's possible for this love affair to resume. I'm going to try some other I'm going to try the black and alligator. And with so many changes in place and so many people in the dining room, Chef Ramsay is hoping the boil house will take some of the pressure off the kitchen. Any, uh, any orders on yet in the boil house? No. Nothing in the boil house already. So get hold of the waitresses, call them in and say, right, start pushing them. And we've got to use that place. We've got to get used to that. Let's go. Great. Sell boil food. I'm, I'm sell trying. one, okay? Sell one to a big table, please. Tonight we have a um, special. It's boiled lobster for two. I don't know if you saw it on the menu, but sell it by the bucket. Just bring us two to the number right <laughs> up. Two buckets of lobster for table five. Two buckets, of lobster. two buckets of lobster, please. Let's go. Put a little bit of butter on there. Give it a nice little glaze, okay? Good. That's it. Two lobsters. Let's go. Look what I have for y'all. Y'all enjoy. It looks good. Look at this. With the boil house now being utilized good. and satisfying customers, good. it's clearly allowed some breathing room for the kitchen. You're eight minutes on bake crab at 33. However, it's now up to Daryl to manage the time wisely. I worked hard today. Let's make it happen. You've got to focus on that window. Communicate with these guys. One table leaving, one table working, so we don't get bumped down, yes? Yes, Chef. I need an alligator. I need a strip. Give me three minutes on that. Let's go. We need to push food up there and cook it as fast as we can. Green tomatoes, chocolate oysters. I need it fast. Let's work one at a time. It's not a race. How are we looking? Three chops and alligator. Hold on one second, Daryl. Smother chop. How are we looking? Daryl, slow down for one minute. Let us catch up, huh? Hey, fucking hell. Yeah. With Daryl calling multiple tickets at the same time. Grits, mash, sweet potatoes. And more focused on speed than anything else. What ticket is it for? The kitchen is now completely confused. How's my pecan catfish? Where's my New York strips? Gotta go. Just put them in the window and we'll figure out how to plate them. Yes, whatever you got. Make sure it's done, huh? I was being told that I need this, this, and this right now, and I just try and move as fast as I can and get the food out. See, it just looks like crap. Do you agree? Yeah. No garnish? No. Go in the window like that. Daryl has managed to get the cooks producing the food at a much quicker pace. Thank you. That looks really good. I don't think this is cooked. But the dishes are not at the level that they should be. So is that is that cooked? <laughs> it's not, is it? Excuse me. Can I get you another one, sir? Sure. Yeah. Guys, the fish is raw. Not tonight. Oh, just, man. just stop. Twenty-four is out. Everybody, stop. What a joke. It's relaunch night at Zeke's. Mother Chop, how we like it? Daryl, slow down for one minute. Let us catch up, huh? And with Daryl pushing the cooks, food is leaving the kitchen quickly. Can I get you another one, stuff? Unfortunately, it's also coming back quickly. Guys, the fish is raw. Not tonight. Oh, man. Just stop. Everybody stop. I mean, Jason, come around. I'd rather be three, four minutes later than rush food out there and the shit's coming back. Not tonight. An expediter should definitely set the tone for the rest of the kitchen. I think Daryl lost control of that. Uh, it's just a big catastrophe. What we've got to do is focus on one table at a time. We've got to communicate. Daryl, talk to me. Don't get too Where you at? Daryl, what table you on? Daryl, take responsibility. I have to stop, refocus. Let's get these tickets out one at a time. I need to do a better job of communicating, very simply. All right, guys, let's focus. Where you at now, Daryl? Pecan catfish and black and alligator. In his hand, Daryl. Table one. Let's go. Move to the next ticket. I got 33 black and alligator pecan catfish. Coming right now, Daryl. Let's go. Following Chef Ramsay's advice of focusing on one table at a time. What table are you right. on? Table 10, yeah, Mac I got it. Mac and cheese, up. Daryl and the chefs are now in sync. Please, let's get this to uh, 31. Like an alligator. Oh, thank you. Perfectly cooked dishes are leaving the kitchen. That's very good. And are being enjoyed by thrilled customers. That's delicious. Good. Folks, news ahead. Now that this restaurant is on its way to a successful relaunch, Hi. Chef Ramsay is ready to spread the word. What happened with the restaurant before? Why did you come here? Uh, this place was legendary. Um, it lost its weight. It's now back on the map. And two new owners that are going to start their own beginning of a new chapter. What is the feedback you're already getting for tonight? That the food is fantastic. I mean, the menu's, it's fabulous. I highly recommend that you come in and try it. Let's finish, let's finish. Somebody get this to 14, please. Is there no more tickets coming in? Let's get this stuff out of here. Well, definitely gorgeous again. That's delicious. That's a wrap, Jack. 
the end of the night, the way it ended made you feel good. I think Daryl showed more personality tonight than he showed in the last few years. We still have some improvements to make, but you can see it's on the right track. Nice job. Good night, ladies. Thank you. Thank you so much. OK. Tonight was about establishing a new Zeke's. And you achieved it. Yes, it's yes. For my first time in New Orleans, fuck me, did you give me a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> if Chef Ramsay told me a week ago that all these changes were going to happen... Why don't I, darling? I don't think I would have really believed it. Can I just have a quick word with you two? Amazing. Look at this place. The potential is huge. I know. Fantastic. It's now your Zeke's. Run with it. And, Daryl, you do care. And you do have a heart, a big heart. Show it to your staff. Indeed, I will. Don't, don't hide that. I'm ready to do things the right way. Ready to get moving. It's a new, it's a new life. It's new energy. Good job. Thank you. Thank good you. Night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. We had a lot of issues here when I first arrived. The staff were at war with the owners. The food was miserable, and the restaurant was seriously struggling for an identity. But what I witnessed was a phenomenal comeback. And how fitting is that? That took place here in the most resilient city across America, New Orleans. Week old lasagna, not so special. In the weeks that followed, a glowing report on the local news. As a family, as a restaurant, it's back on the map. Brought a surge of customers to the restaurant. Hi, how are y'all? Daryl and Ellen are doing their best to raise <laughs> staff morale. You all did an excellent job. I can't do this without you guys and are reaching out to the community. And we really thank you all for coming. It means a lot to us. Thanks. Put Zeke's back on the map.